district with regard to paperwork violations. Ms. Del Wing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to thank Chairman Scott and Ranking Member Schrader for holding this hearing, and thank you, Dr. Weil and Commissioner Vakin, for being here today. Um, no one here would condone violations of the Fair Labor Standards Act, but the actions taken by DOL in regards to um, these cases appear to be egregious. Um, my district in Washington State is one of the largest berry growers per capita in the country. Um, this is especially true for raspberries, increasingly so for blueberries, and I'm very concerned that we could see these actions repeated in my district against farmers who play by the rules. Um, it seems like this investigative method leaves our constituents with a false choice. Admit guilt where there may not be any, and pay a hefty fine while to save your crop, or fight the case and lose the crop. For example, a blueberry farmer in Washington State was cited for employing underage children, which that farmer denied. However, that farmer, the employer, could not verify or dispute the violation claimed by DOL because DOL refused to release their notes. Hot goods was invoked on 26,000 pounds of blueberries, and a 30-day hot goods hold was placed on the rest of the crop worth about $35,000. The employer was forced to admit guilt. So, Dr. Weil, I, the scenario, and we've heard many of these scenarios before, you have someone in a situation where to go for due process, you, they have to potentially give up their crop. Do you, does that seem fair? Is that an appropriate action to be taken? Um, thank you, Congresswoman. Let, let me, I, I, I feel like I, I should clarify the process because I think uh, I, I want to be clear. Well, I, I, I just want to, but this is the, the fundamental part is that before someone's had a right to go to court or to defend themselves, you've taken product that is perishable, only has a few days that it may be, you know, available in the market for them to get price right. back. Do you ever think it's okay to take that product, do you understand the, the situation you're putting a farmer in who may very well have a strong defense, and if they defend themselves, they may not get their crop back? And, and uh, thank you. What I wanted to clarify is our investigators cannot block shipment of the goods. They're not allowed to do that. They are, they, when they find violations in the course of an investigation, um, when they meet with the employer, they ask the employer to voluntarily restrain shipment of that goods until the situation can be resolved. If a resolution can be made, which it is in the vast majority of cases, the shipment of goods are released and everything proceeds with both compliance, assuring both the workers that they have received what they are entitled and that other farmers who are complying with the law are not put at a But a, an agreement means an admission of guilt for someone who may feel like they have a case and are not guilty of the violation they've been accused of? If, if the parties feel that they are not, uh, that the violations um, are inappropriate, they are within their rights. And if we feel we need to with, with, um, not allow the goods to flow, we need to go to a federal court. And, and in a federal court, both the employer, the grower, the farm labor contract. But you understand that every day for a perishable product like a berry, every day you are preventing um, that product from going to market while someone, in the end, if someone goes to court and they find out that they are not guilty of, of the infraction, right. are you going to pay them back for the product that they weren't able to take to market? We are very aware, and again, this is why we use it only in very specific instances of the perishability of the product, and that's why we move quickly to resolve the problem as quickly as possible for the but benefit of the workers and of the growers involved. In a perishable case, you're, without defining what quickly means, that product is gone, that, that farmer who, if found not guilty, now has lost their, their product unfairly and that can't be right. returned to them. Isn't there another method that can be used without taking their crop? Again, we can ask the parties to voluntarily re refrain from shipping. They don't have, they we do not seize the good. We are not allowed, we are not authorized by the statute to seize the good. We can go to a court in the case that we can't resolve. Which are, what are, when we have used this um, authority, significant cases. I would point out 
that the, typic, the, the average hot goods case has back wages due that are six times the level of overall agricultural cases, that the number of employees affected and I, and I, are eight but I, times. But Dr. Will, I, I just want to point out that we're not talking about all hot goods cases. We're talking about a very specific cases of perishable, only perishable goods because – once again, the value will be gone by the time um, there comes to resolution. And I've run out of time, so I yield back. But I think it's important for you to distinguish because we feel like there's a big difference between those with perishable goods and what might happen versus other goods right. where they may still have, retain their entire value in their return. I Thank understand you, Mr. That. Chair. Could I, I just back. clarify, yes. Congresswoman, that the statistics I gave you were specific for agriculture? It's not just agriculture, perishable goods, not all of agriculture has the same deadline that, for example, um, cert for certain fruits and vegetables have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before I recognize Mr. Yeho, Dr. Walsh, she asked you a very specific question, whether or not